Hold your nipper, Steve Menzies. Fittler will get the lock job. Second row, though, that's anybody's guess. And here today, we've got Clyde Burner. Manly have got Kossef, Menzies, Gardner. Canberra's only won one of four clashes against Manly. That, uh, that Bruce. Steve Roach on the sidelines. Good day, big fella. How you going, Ray? Beautiful conditions down here on the sideline for Rugby League. 24 degrees, a swirling breeze at the moment. Well, both sides are real desperate today, as we already mentioned, but I was talking to the coaches in the tunnel before the game, and they've uh, they've said that ball security is their main priority today. Should be a great match. It's the first match this season that Canberra have played at home, and uh, one stat is that Canberra have only won one game here in, since 1990 against Manly. Paul McBlain is the referee. He's been given the big match. No Ricky Stewart. But Laurie Daly would be used to that. Apropos 1997. So the Raiders running from left to right. And Pearson, the former Magpie, former Rooster. Playing it just outside the 20 metre line. The first tackle, the first penalty of the game. Goes to Canberra. No Ricky Stewart, no Craig Field in the number seven for Manly in the starting lineup. Bus made there and the penalty awarded. Brandon Pearson took the football. Interesting to see when Manly have the ball, whether that will mean Jeff Tuvey goes in and plays in the dummy half roll. Sadaris are running forward. And Kosser for first receiver. DeVico. Second tackle of the game for Canberra. And this is Ben Kennedy, who's recent... Uh, Fortunes have been very unlucky. Wilford scampers away from dummy half, reaching the 30-metre line under the tackle of Menzies. And then McFadden it was that showed the ball before giving it to DeVico. DeVico playing up in the front row with Hedrington today. As Daly puts in a kick, he's looking for the outside men. Oh, big jump by the manly number five, Albert Torrens. Babawadi. Feeling that that could have brought a penalty, really. And look at the strapping on the right leg of Neil Tierney as Nick Cossett gets pounded on the 20-metre line. Big man back into the side. And takes it up again. Second time this six. Tierney now just inside his own 30-metre line. Lions. And that kick looks like it's too full, it is. So Canberra get a wonderful opportunity from 25 metres out. And they're really working on DeVico. Canberra gets a penalty, they want to take a quick tap. I think a bit of wisdom has taken over. Come on. Hello. There's more trouble at the ranch. Yep. You call, you call out to him. He's reluctant to get back. I'll continue to penalise him. Just make sure you get him back, OK? Yep. Thank you. Kossett's got a problem, Steve. Just That was a great set of six tackles in defence from the Canberra Raiders, but Kossett got smashed on the ground. He's head hit the ground. This goal could give him an opportunity to get his thoughts back in order, but he was in a bit of trouble. You can see the excavations in the background. This playing surface has been lowered four metres to facilitate the construction of this $27 million redevelopment. And uh, the stadium, as Hancock goes on, the stadium will seat 40,000 and be completed by October and will be used for some of the Olympic soccer events. Well, this is very unusual. Or we see John Hopawati leaving the field, the man that was penalised and then spoken to, along with Jeff Toovey. Craig Hancock into the action now in under three minutes. And it doesn't appear as though Hopawati has any problem whatsoever physically. Just keep one eye on Hopawati as he goes to the bench. He'll probably be on the two-way. And there's the kick from Fernup. It's there. Raiders get first points. Yeah, here's the, the tackle on Kossef. 
And I'm watching and watching John Hopawati. He is in fact on the two-way. Just what is being said to him, I I wonder. That's Hetherington. Now Brad Clyde. Well, Gus, do you bring a player off after three minutes for personal instruction or something to, to get out to the rest of the team? Well, if it was for the rest of the team, I doubt that John Hopawati was the man to relay the message. It can only be towards John Hopawati and perhaps his relationship with the referee. Uh, there's no doubt that McBlain's got onto his offside tactic and has, has warned him straight away. Perhaps Bob Fulton wants to reinforce that so that John Hopawati takes lead of the instruction. Well, he's back on now. Phillips. 2-0 in favour of Canberra. David Ferner with a penalty. Penalty against the Raiders now. Inside the 10. It's a little bit of relief for Manley. Lyons with a good kick. The tap will be taken almost on the halfway line by Sedaris. Joe Taylor. One of the big youngsters up in the front row, trying to fill the gap. Kosef able to stand and unload across the Lions. Terry Hill, beat Pearson, taken by McFadden. And they're seven metres into Canberra's area for Daniel Gartner now. Sedaris answers the call, second man play, wide ball for Lions. And uh, the kick, oh, it stands on its point, John Hopawati, he's over the line. You don't get a better bounce than that. That was the instruction run. That's what Fulton was saying he to said, him. He said, get out there, get the bounce and score the try. He's a genius, Bozo. Oh, isn't he? Cliff Lyons here. You have a look out, out wide. Now, really, I don't think they knew the kick was coming because they didn't react until fairly late and they were a long way back. But the, kit, the, the bounce is an absolute shocker for the Canberra players who couldn't get there on the full. And John Hopawate, unstoppable from five metres out. Really, it's been all Canberra the opening of this game, so quite a shock. First time Manly get down this end of the field, they put the four-pointer on. Well, it's been interesting. I mean, when you're, when, you're, when you're losing games and your confidence goes out the window a little bit, it's certainly affected Manly. In their first couple of sets with the ball, they've had opportunity to spread and haven't. And that time, they're in good position to spread but kick. Something like that just might uh, just might jolt them into action now. Should be a six-point lead. Here's Phillips now from right in front. And Manley takes the lead. Six points to two, six minutes gone. What an eventful day for John Hopalwadi. So the restart for Canberra. Still reeling under the shock of a bounce that couldn't have been more beautiful for Manley. And deployed by Bob Fulton to change tactics and start the game with Cliff Lyons has paid dividends immediately. In fact, we had to wait 37 minutes for Lyons come into, to come into the action against Parramatta last week. A real change in tactics. An instrumental in putting on the first try. Over the last couple of seasons, Peter, it's been a bit of a pattern with Bob Fulton. In their most important classes, they usually go with this ploy. So no doubt Bob Fulton has indicated to his side just how important this game is here today down at Canberra. McNamara, the fullback. Croker. Put him down for another jumper. He's worn just about every jumper in rugby league, Jason Croker. He's very unlucky to miss the kangaroo tour, actually, in 1994. Ferner. First time we've seen Canberra this year. Channel 9. And this man apparently has started to hit his straps. Clyde. Daly on the blind side. And the ball into the end goal for Phillips. Vanacolo is going down the ground. I'm anxious to see him when he gets a touch and gets into some space. And speaking of that young man, as penalty coming Manley's way here for offside nothing to do with what happened around the play the ball area 
Steve Roach, you don't think it was any coincidence that Manly kicked to this side of the field on that try? Well, you are talking about uh, tactics a little bit earlier, Gus and yourself, and I'm sure that would be in Bob Fulton's plans to kick to this wing. It's a young fellow, it's Vanicolo's first game in first grade. So Manly are 35 metres out. Similar position to where they used Cliffy Lyons with the cross kick. Tuvi now. Wolford hangs on underneath. Hetherington over the top. Crossing the 20. Kosef. That's the 10. Sedaris. Tuvi. Lyons. No kick. Through the hands. Oh! What a pass! What a pass! What a try! Phillips! Phillips gets it for Manley! Just the start that Manny were looking for, and again, Cliff Lyons heavily involved. And really, you've got to say, it didn't look that difficult to read, but Canberra in defence, they struggled. As we freeze it there, you can see Lyons coming to the defence. He's trying to sell that he's going to pass to this man, but Hancock coming at this angle runs into the hole that Cliff Lyons opens up just because of the, the lateness of the pass. You see the Canberra player in the headgear, McFadden. He didn't read it well at all, and, and Luke Phillips... He gets the try. It'll look beautiful from front on. This is what Cliff Lyons has, well, he's revelled in over the last 10 or 12 years. I think there, Peter, that, uh, that Luke Phillips has, has sucked the benefit out of playing in a side with, with Steve Menzies. There's no doubt that Canberra overread that, saw Menzies on the outside of Lyons. McFadden and Clyde overread the situation, and Luke Phillips has snuck through on the short ball and caught them napping. Steve Menzies certainly dragged a lot of defence away with his run. I know Manly have got away to a miserable start in 1998, but this boy, Luke Phillips, hasn't. He's proving to be a very good buy for them. He began his career in grade here at Canberra in 1996. Here he is now, 20 metres in, on a slight angle, and he converts his own try. What a mighty start for the Eagles. 12 points to two. David Furner. Restarting again, something that he... Hoped he wouldn't be doing quite so soon. Start of the second half would have been more to his liking. Kosef, he's OK now, but he, he'll reignite that headache if he takes too many tackles like that. Hello, penalty to the defending side against Kosef. Saying that he had hold of Laurie Daly's jersey there around the neck area. Let's just have a look. The number six being held there with the right hand of Nick Kosef. And that's what drew the penalty. 3-2 the penalties to the home side. DeVico. Looking to put some respectability on the scoreboard, Canberra. They run numbers to a wide blind. They come back open. They go up the middle, fern up. He's lost it in an endeavour to reach it over the line. Well, both Jim Sedaris and Luke Phillips did well there. They didn't get off the line particularly well. And then, as Ray pointed out, Ferner, in his attempt to reach the football over, had it knocked out by Luke Phillips. And Manny will get the scrum feed with Ferner making the knock-on. These two sides, these two clubs... In, as they send replacements into the game, 24 is Damian Brown, big lump of a lad, and Adam Peters in 17. These two clubs in the last 25 decided uh, premierships have won nine of them. Canberra back up to the line, please. Manly six, Canberra three, so they've, they've been two of the more successful clubs, haven't they? Along with Parramatta, Canterbury, Brisbane. They just about stole in the limelight. Those clubs that I've mentioned. Who will it be this year? Will Newcastle get their second? Kosef. Will Brisbane get their third? Or in fact their fourth if you include last year's Super League Grand Final. And we should. Lions for Phillips. Menzies. Hopperwadi, I thought he had it, he didn't. Menzies plays it. Sedaris. Yes, that's Albert Torrens. Kick goes out on the fall. 
pass more like Manly, isn't it? I mean, as soon as they got the opening on the outside, the ball in lines his hand, a couple of decoys. Phillips, again, the beneficiary of having decoy runners like the likes of Menzies. And from the next play, Sedaris runs down the short side. He's able to get Torrens away. Not an easy job on this surface, particularly, to get a kick back in field. Comes on the outside of his boot. Now over the touchline on the full, but much more confident play from Manly. A 12-2 start as them getting back to a little bit of form. Canberra been out of sorts. They've still got a rally. That was Vainicolo. Now Daly. Clyde. Ooh, gee, his head went back on the shoulders. He, he hit the top of Tooby's head. And that's what we said in the preview. Bradley Clyde, when his side isn't going well, comes in and does a lot of that bullocking work around the rucks. Now, he's much better served out on the edges with Laurie Daly running as a, a wide running back rower, and he's in back play now, stung by that defence. These Canberra forwards have got to take it on themselves to get them going forward. Daly. Sending it towards the line. It won't find it. Phillips. Good chase by Vainicolo and Ricky. The Manly will work it. Off their own line, out of the corner. Torrent. Field is about to come on. I think he's just shed the uh, the blankets. Gartner. With the publicity young Craig's received today. He'll be chomping at the bit. Chance here. Oh, if he could have got clean ball, Croker. They had uh, a big chance on the left. Lyons got a bad pass. Oh, Croker thumps it. Now, it is the fullback, McNamara. Well, for two teams that have prided themselves on defence over the last decade, what we've seen out there so far has really been awful from both sides. Probably Cameron have been the, the worst defender in missed tackles, but Manly didn't start particularly well that department as well. And got the touchy on for an incident in yeah. that tackle. I'll tell you what this is. This is Adam Peters who's gone in on the tackle on DeVico and his forearm and elbow look very yeah. suspect. I don't think he made contact. That was my first thought. But here it is. Listen, you quick quiet. Do not say two words. Stand up, listen. Mate, like the player was on the deck. Yep. And this player's come down heavily with the forearm, man. Okay. Did you report an incident? Alright, listen, put your own report for it. He's seen it. Alright, okay, let's keep it at that. Yeah, what I saw was exactly what happened. He missed his mark. But what was in his mind? What was his intent? And keeping in mind what Peter Ryan got the other day, and I, I don't know that that penalty was stiff enough either. The referees. I'm uh, not impressed with it. Oh, Hetherington, he had a little look-see. Not like him. He's a great young lion, but he's taken a look. He doesn't need me to tell him either. Look at him. Yeah, well, when things are going bad for you, these types of things can occur. Canberra one from four. They're down 12 points to do on the scoreboard against Manly in an important game. And little mistakes like that just keep eating away at whatever confidence you have left. I know Canberra the last few weeks have played the ball very close to the play the ball area there. Traditionally a side that gives the ball plenty of air and sweeping long passes out to their speed. But such as their lack of confidence, that hasn't been happening in recent times. 12-2 Manly. Canberra got the first points, a penalty. But then two tries for Manly. Menzies. Menzies able to stand, but there wasn't support. When I say that, there wasn't support in a clear space. That was Damian Brown, the big fellow that took it up on the previous tackle. Manly are on the Canberra 40 metre line. Tuvi, Lyons, Hill wants it, he's got it. Now, Aljunic did well, he was going into touch, Hill's with it. They're only 15 metres out from the line. Menzies, Lyons, the cross field kick again. And it'll be taken on the full by Vanacolo. Just a little bit deeper there than Cliff Lyons was aiming for. And again, some nice play from Manly attacking 
the right side of the field. Terry Hill getting on the out of, outside of his man, and Olsenick did a marvellous job to get the ball back in the field to play when he was going towards touch. Canberra for mine still look fairly disorganised at this end of the field, having trouble getting out of their own danger area. Wolford's run from dummy half helps. Jack Lewis Brown. Now Daly. Trying to get something moving. Ferner. This is the last. 44 metres on the five tackles. And Daly's been taken out after the kick. That's the reason for the penalty. Late tackle on the kicker. Penalty where the ball lands. It was very close to the defence. Interesting to see. Well, I think that Jeff Tuvey was committed. I think that's a fortunate one for the Raiders. Well, he was committed and Hopperwadi was trying to take no part. Tuvey really knocked, knocked Laurie Rising Daly Raiders, into John Hopperwadi. That's a fortunate penalty. Daly. From the wide angle, opting to take the free. Hetherington. Mark McClendon has gone on for the Raiders. McFadden away. Seabold. Back now for Daly. Croker. He keeps this up. Laurie's going to sleep well tonight. We've seen plenty of ball. Wolford. Croker now taking a look. Where's Daly? Got him on the left. Held it back for McFadden. Manley didn't swallow it. This is the last. Daly indicates the kick. The jump is on. The bat downs for Canberra. That's a try. Is it? I think he's knocked on, Ray. I think the hand of Vayner Carlo propelled the ball towards the line just before he actually picked it up and placed it over. Goes backwards there, but he touched yep. it there. I'll tell you something, Paul McBlain got a very good call from his touch judge he was about to give it I'm sure well that aside Ray it was a very I think very ordinary set of six from Canberra there one you wouldn't expect from them in attacking situation if you didn't know better you would think that they think there's a weakness up the middle of the manly ruck but man, Canberra been playing like that for weeks they keep turning the ball back on the inside no confidence to spread the ball whatsoever and Manly were able to hold them out there and really Canberra relying on the six on tackle five for their try Kossif bringing it down the blind side. Sedaris to the open. Gartner and 17 is Peters. He's on report for that incident involving he and uh, Luke DeVico. Tuvi, a sprint, and then a stutter, and then Gartner and Sedaris, and Menzies is on his inside. Menzies, Menzies, he's a meter from the line. Oh, yes, yes, momentum gets him there. Referee's going to call for the video, I think. Back. Well, Feeling everywhere there's the been a try in, in this match, or in this case it might be disallowed, Menzies has been somewhere. Well, I don't think it will be disallowed. I agree with you. I think the momentum took him over the line. Beautiful work again. Manly really looking good on the fringe of the ruck and up the middle of the ruck. This time Sidaris capitalised, was involved. And even though his arm has hit the ground before the line, I think he's got every right to roll over and put the ball down. Yeah, he could have rolled another two or three times there. He wasn't held. That'll be a try to Manly. It is. The difference between these two sides at the moment is that when Manly have the ball, there's more players in motion. They're supporting the play. They're moving the, the ball from side to side. As you see here, Tuvi sees a, a little opening up the middle, and all of a sudden support will come. Kosef onto Sidaris, now Menzies. And great players like this, particularly great try scorers, can find the line. Even though he's attended by three players, strength, drive, roll. Yep, got another one. The, ta the tackler, just looking at that again, the tackler has more contributed to the momentum than the attacker. Well, they had every opportunity to stop this try because there were three, as Gus pointed out. And I think Laurie Daly really should have come up with the tackle here on Menzies. So he falls off. I don't know whether he got much help from the other player coming in, but they really had an opportunity to stop him from getting close to the line for the momentum to take him over. Well, it's a stunned crowd here at Bruce Stadium at the moment. 
Luke Phillips misses the conversion. But Manly, a commanding lead, three tries, 16 to two. David Ferner, again restarting. Well, I think a lot of these fans at Bruce Stadium probably thought, well, we'll go down and watch the footy. Manly's going no better than us, and this will be a nice close contest. At the moment, there's 14 points in it. Yeah, I, I hate to keep coming back to it, but this confidence thing with Canberra, I think, has been an issue over the first four rounds of the Premiership. You know, you're nervous in a game like this. It's so important. Suddenly, you're 14 points behind. It will take the nerves away from them, and we might see a little bit more open football as they try to chase this lead. That's what you're saying, Phil, is quite remarkable when you look through their side and, and you've got players like Croker, Pearson, Wiki, Daly, Clyde, Ferner and Kennedy who've all played plenty of first-team footy. Yeah, well, that is surprising. I mean, what have we got? Six internationals in, in that lot alone. Uh, Ricky Stewart not here today, but that shouldn't make such a significant difference. They've, they've shown they can cope without him in the past. Um, I, I really think it comes back to confidence. And look, Manly were no better coming into this game, but have just got on a roll with that first kick that found its mark and, and all of a sudden they're in front where they like to be uh, and they've rolled their sleeves up and got some points. Canberra really need to consolidate now and make sure it doesn't get any worse before half-time and if, if possible, get back on the scoreboard. 25th minute. Menzies playing it. Manly working off the penalty. Terry Hill. His position in that Australian side also very competitive. Abawadi. Ah! He did very well. Gave Torrens a chance. Minute though it might have been. Lions, the schema, the prober. Kossef. Gardner's over. Manley's in for number four. Ah! Oh, the Eagles are carving them up here at Bruce Stadium. When you play like this, it makes you wonder where it's all gone in previous weeks. But Manley, buoyed by the fact they're in front on the scoreboard, are now coming up with plays that their coach thought they'd forgotten them. A nice little reverse up the middle of the play, the ball here, and Gartner off a Kosev pass. Too strong, some threadbare defence there through the middle of the ruck. Hopawadi with a little one-arm pass, gave them a little crack down the left-hand side. And when they're in this mood, Manly, they're playing a nice, simple game plan. They're only having one or two shots per set of six. As Bob Fulton said, they're controlling the ball, working to position, and around their key ball players, Lyons and, and Kosev, rather than everyone trying to have an attempt with the ball to do something miraculous, they're just relying on their key ball players, Lions and Kosef, and everyone else has rolled their sleeves up and gone forward with the football. Nice and simple, but at 20 to 2, what more do you need to do? I'll take you back to a comment you made on radio. I think it was last weekend. You warned everybody not to write Manly off, and in fact, I think your words were, I'm just glad that we're not playing them next week. I'm certainly glad we're not playing them here today, that's for sure. Look, they're a very proud club and a proud side, and this game's far from over. I mean, there are some great players in the other side as they come back to kick off. But, uh, you know, Manly would have been strung by that criticism. I didn't think their performance was all that bad against Parramatta because Parramatta are going exceptionally well at the moment. So a shot while Phil was talking of Mel Meninga. Does not the cord when they tackle like that, but doesn't it? What's that, mate? Oh, the defence here. I find it hard to believe this is the Canberra side. They came up in, in a staggered fashion. Just woeful defence. Steve Wright's on the sidelines. Well, I don't think it's any secret, the good start from Manly. It's been their back row. We know how good they are, Menzies, Gartner and Kosef. They've been involved in everything in this game for Manly. They're on the front foot. Although I've, I've got to remind all of us, I suppose, and I guess we've all said it at some stage this season, they've got no go-forward men. We've got no, no Carrolls and no, no Gillespies and those sort of people. I don't know that they've been given any better platform today I think Cliffy Lyons and two. Here's a chance. Broker. 20 metres out in the centre. Now, Canberra's got Manley on the back foot. There's a Manley player down. McFadden. 12 metres out from the line. Daly. Daly. Stepping... Run by McClendon. Now McFadden. And now DeVico. Well, that's... That's, that's, that's going to require one. another assessment by the referee. Well, again, the video, man. Again, Paul McBlain was about to award it. DeVico putting the ball down. The doubt will be as to whether he's bounced the ball. 
the Canberra players, and, and we do always look at the reaction of, of the teams out there as to how they respond to the incident. Canberra believe that DeVico has scored, and from that, he definitely has. They'll get the verdict, Canberra. Just for a moment, I... I thought to myself just for a moment, Andrew McFadden was having a big game. He was everywhere, and suddenly I realised there was another bloke with a headgear about the same size. Yeah, well, this gave him the opportunity. Jason Croker taking the intercept. Now, Luke Phillips actually hurt himself in that tackle. We've got a few injury worries as we see DeVico come up with a strong effort to get the ball down. Laurie Daly is limping off the field, and Luke Phillips has got a shoulder problem, and he motioned straight away to the trainer to get him off as well. We're actually looking, looking at him in the in-goal area. Well, that's just what the doctor ordered for Canberra as we come up to half-time. Ferner from 20 metres in, and... Oh, flags are up! Well, that's one winner, David's back today. 20 points to eight. They need to back a few more, though, don't they? It is dire straits for Canberra. Daly's gone to the sheds. Here's the kick from Fernup. And bingo. David Boyle has gone on. Vanicolo is off. Manly. Well, Vanny Carlo also picked up an injury earlier on. He looked like he went over on his ankle when Manly were attacking. As Luke Phillips restarts. Kennedy getting a pass away under extreme pressure. Leave it with me. It's come off your, it's come out of your hand. Let's just check on the. Here's Daly suffering his injury. Steve Roach has got a report on that. We'll come to you in a moment, Steve. Manley's on the attack, 20 metres out. Menzies, 12 metres away. Sedaris, Tierney. It's been a back injury, apparently, with Tierney. Now Klosev. Sedaris looking for Tuvi. Lions. Papawati. Pulled down by Ruben Ricky. Lions again. And beautifully cleaned up by the fullback McNamara. Yes, Steve. Yeah, it's a hamstring injury to Laurie Daly. I'll tell you what, he didn't mess around. He's straight into the sheds to get treatment. Going right for them, Seabold, penalty to them, Canberra. Sidaris having an animated conversation with the referee. Four tries to one. Live tomorrow morning from Augusta, Georgia, don't forget the final round of the 98 Masters. That's at 6 a.m. Check your local guides. Fred Couples by two. What about that grand old man of golf? 58, and he's one under par and in contention, Jack Nicholas. Ferner. Some hope for you and I, Gus, still. Not quite in their league, uh, Roberts. Davico losing it. I was talking about age, Gus, do you mind? I know you're not as good as Nicholas. Five won the handling errors. Kossef feeling a bit of good defence from Canberra. As Neil Tini comes off the field again, Ray, I don't think he's 100%, but I, I'm sure that Fulton's got him to play today to give these younger props and these inexperienced props a little confidence when he's playing in very short bursts. Terry Hill. Beating, beating Pearson. Tuvi. 
dummy for Kosef going the other way. And then smothered by DeVico and Hetherington. Lions away from McFadden. And the kick bouncing over the dead ball. Well, I'm just wondering whether Cliff Lyons was setting himself a field goal there. Well, we are still eight minutes out from half time. They lead by 12. Just wondering whether Cliffy was thinking maybe 13 might be a nice lead to take in the opposition having to score three times. I think young McFadden was thinking that. He wasn't going to give him the chance. And, of course, forced the error there with the kick. That's McFadden. And now Ferner. Now, McClendon is playing at 5'8", and he looks just like the boy that just passed it. Practically identical. Time in possession there. 60%, 40% Manley's way. And uh, Wolford De Vico in a kicking role. Torrens. Over the 40. And just into Canberra's area. Manley making inroads on every set of six they're looking very dangerous here they are making the ball do the work menzies with strength sadaris with reflexes and now two v away and it's with um, peters who's tackled 31 meters away from the canberra line sadaris then the blind for kosef and an intercept by ferner but i think he knocked on touch and go davico here's the catch no doubt he's not that on. Hetherington. A little knock on, I fancy, from David Ferner. Well, it may not please the purists, but I think Canberra have got to just stop worrying about tackling around the legs. Five occasions there in a row we saw tacklers involved, but the Manly player able to offload. I think they've just about got to go up and worry about the football and nothing else at the moment. My understanding is that Canberra were lectured during the week about their tackling styles from the uh, from the officials in the game. A lot of players with arm guards, a lot of high shots in last week's game. That could be playing on their minds. Oh, Phillips was uh, an open target there for Croker. There was nothing illegal. The crowd didn't like the fact that John Hopawate acted as a little bit of a shepherd for the, the next dummy half runner. He's a tough kid, Luke Phillips. He's copped a hiding on a couple of occasions in matches we've seen this year, but he hasn't buckled. He, he keeps fronting. Cliffy thinking I might have a little shot at this myself. The running caper. He's gone over to the blind side now. Here he is. And a rebound off the backside there of Brandon Pearson. No knock on. Chance for Canberra. Hetherington, crowd appealing for a penalty. 20 metre line, let's have a look at the 10, it's okay. Full of eye. McFadden. McClendon wanting it. Full of eye, having a shot himself. Clinton, I think, wants to put it in the air. Absolutely not. Ferner. David Boyle. Now, Wolford. And then McFadden. McNamara. Croker. Did he get it down? Go to the video. Nah, not a problem this time. The referee, Paul McLean, asked the touch judge, who is in great position, and Jason Croker did very, very well after... Quick pass there from Jeff McNamara. Very, very flat Canberra. You can see there their attacking line almost in one line. That was the key pass, and so too the one from McNamara. It put Torrens back on his heels, and Jason Craker so strong. Uh, no problems at all there. No need to go to any referee. There was a really poor read here by Hopawati as McFadden held the play up. Hopawati went in on players with no real need, but allowed the two on one on his young winger. And Croker a little too strong for Torrens there. McFadden here does well. He holds it up, looks inside, looks outside, gets the defence to stand still. And that created the space on the outside for Croker. And if David Ferner can slot this one over, all of a sudden we have a new ball game and the pendulum has swung a little bit in the confidence stakes. Man who would start to be looking over their shoulder, a big lead. And now Canberra, two quick tries has brought them back into the game. 
20 points to 12. Four tries to two. David Ferner from the touchline. 20 metre line. Got it beautifully. Is it going to have the length? It's got offline anyway. 20 points to 12, no change. Inside three minutes. The only concern I had here when I thought they might go the video was Jason Craig's right elbow, but there's no doubt it was in the field of play when he planted the football down. And you've got to say that even if they went down 8 0 behind, Mal Meninga would be well, far from happy with the first team's performance. But I think he'd be saying, well, you played very, very poorly, yet you're still in the game because you're only eight down. That's where some confidence might come in. Just a little correction in that play leading to the try. We've been giving McFadden credit for the pass. It was McClendon, the other little fellow out there in the headgear. That's McFadden. Slipping his way through. Now Wolford, Chip Chase looking for the regather, cleaned up by Tuvi. Torrance. Brown. Taylor. Sadaris. Kosef. Hills coming in. 40 metres away from the line. They were looking very cosy, Manly. Canberra, in spite of their performance, have got back a little bit. 14. It's Jamie Olgenek. Having a couple of bites at the cherry. Jerry Hill. Nick Kosef. Cuts out Lions. 2v. I thought the pass might have been a fraction forward to Gartner. Referee now gives six more tackles. Here they come again. Menzies had a juggle by John Hopperwadi. Did well to get it in. Sedaris. Tuvi. Siren in the background. Ken Canberra hold them out. Here's Daniel Gardner. The ball to ground and Canberra's Kennedy comes away with it. So at half time. Manly with four tries to two. 20 points to 12. And we will take a break and be back with the second half. To 12. And Canberra from right to left. They're the ones playing catch up. Tierney comes storming back. 20 metre run by Tierney. He's been used in short bursts by Bobby Fulton. The match got away beautifully for Manley. An opportunist try, if I can express it that way. Very much resting on Lady Luck for John Hopperwadi. And then it really got better and better before Canberra clawed their way back to some form of respectability at the halftime break. Steve Roach is ready on the sidelines. We'll go to him, Steve. What uh, what did Laurie say for a start? Yeah, he's very despondent down there on the sideline. Poor old Laurie Daly. He's got a hamstring injury, especially with the test match coming up in about 12 days' time. But uh, the Raiders, um, now Meninga, he mainly talked his halftime speech about defence. He said, let's not overread Manly's attack. We have to go to them in defence. Put them on the ground. They'll keep scoring if we're not, not committed in our defence. He said one positive to come out of it in the first half is we're not that far behind on the scoreboard. While the Sea, sea Eagles, Bob Fulton, was quite happy. He said, that's a great start. Really concentrated on our completions being the second halves this season that have really let us down. He said, more chases on our kicks to put pressure on the, on the man taking the football. Just before you go, Steve, the, the, the breeze, is it playing a part? No, not really. It's swirling here, uh, actually, at the moment, Ray, uh, at both ends of the field. And also, quickly, Steve, that injury with Laurie Daly, will he be back into this match or not? No, he will not be back to not, not be back today. And, uh, you know, as you know, Peter, I never did a hamstring, but you probably did. Uh, they take a long time to heal. This is Kosef using Hill. Wrapped up by McClendon. 
Earns a little rap from Brett Hetherington. The tackle. Gartner. Tuvi. Just getting his kick in. In front of the outreached hand from the Canberra player. This is McNamara. This is Vanacolo back in the game. He's replaced. Now there's a Canberra player getting some uh, some treatment. He's on the ground and out of it at the moment. McClendon for Ferner. You can see two tra trainers out on the field. It's hard to pick up as Wilford goes straight Wilford. through. Wilford! Won't have the pace. Have a look at the divot they've taken out of the ground. Now, to the right. Away from McFadden to Ferner. Through Clyde. Oh, misunderstanding. Good work by the fullback McNamara. He's lost the ball now. What about the divot in the ground? So Simon Wolf had made a good break up the middle of the ruck here. Phillips and Tuvia got to come up with the tackle. Watch this bang. Now there's more, there's more dirt coming up there than after a Ray Warren sand iron. Well, they've a, immediately run out to repair that. Don't know about more. There's as much. You see McNamara just knocking on them. The man down injured was Seabold. Number 15 took a long time to get to his feet. I guess we quickly should give some background on this Mark McClendon as well. He's only an 18-year-old, first year out of school, and he represented Australian schoolboys in both league and union. A very talented young player. This was the injury suffered by Seabold. It's quite some time back, and there he is back on the sidelines now. Daniel Gartner. Just outside his own 30-metre line. Manly enjoying an eight-point lead. Terry Hill pulled down again by McClendon. He's had a bit of work to do out there on the left side defence for Canberra. Phillips tackled by McFadden. Now Lyons on the blind, rolling it down to McNamara on his own 20 metre line. He's talking about McClendon out there. They're actually defending them outside the centre there, outside Brandon Pearson. Now Terry Hill has half got round him twice, and I think he'll fancy his chances on that smaller player and instructing Cliff Lyons to play to the right hand side of the field as much as possible. Vanicolo, Clyde, the senior players have got to stand up. They've got to stand tall now. No Daly. No Stewart, no Mullins, no Nagus. Goes on. Pearson. 37 metres away from the Manly line. DeVico. Good defence from Kosef. Wolford. Fadden. Players in pursuit for Canberra are onside. Phillips has got the job to do. Kennedy the chaser and the tackler. Line drop out, they get another shot at them. Now, I think Canberra will be getting a little bit of a sniff here. I don't think the eight points is going to be all that much of a problem, the way Manly are defending. It's just whether or not the Canberra defence can make that good enough to win. And certainly on a roll here with a repeat set of six, Manly are really waiting for them with the ball at the moment. And without Daly and Stewart, I think maybe they've been lulled into a false sense of security. This Canberra side looks prepared to move the ball. Special comments today from Sydney City coach Phil Gould. Matt Namara, the fullback, taken out by Tuvi, given to McClendon. McClendon with a sprint. Now they go down the left. He'll go all the way. Full of Alberto Full of Gets it over for Canberra. They've got more than a sniff. Well, that's again quite remarkable. I'm just trying to work out where the cover defence was. It, it just came from nothing. Oh, something wrong with this end of the park. Well, the, the line drop out. It, it's taken and McNamara does well. Yeah, I'll tell you what happens here. You watch as Fullerby gets around the outside. The Manly players will see the Manly trainer behind the line. And I'm sure Luke Phillips... We, yeah, I'm sure Luke Phillips feels as though he was a defender. You saw Terry Hillbork. The trainer couldn't come across and make the tackle, and all of a sudden there were three men there and no one chased. Well, I guess there has been criticism in the past about the amount of time trainers spend on 
the field, and, and Manly's been one of those clubs criticised. If that is the case, then it's cost them points with Albert Fulavoy again running in a very soft try. Well, I think he's shocked. Fulavoy, Fulavoy had a look at him and said, well, you're not going to get me, and I'm over in the corner. But there was no doubt there that the trainer had balked everybody on the field. And as we said, this, this Canberra side, without Daly and Stewart, are moving the ball more than they have in the last month. David Ferner, sadly offline. But it's 20 points to 16. Canberra coming back. Canberra. Force use of the football in this passage. Third try for them. My goodness, they're making some... Now that I've been alerted to the, the divots in the ground, they're making some very big holes in this turf, which is only obviously very new. If little McFadden steps in one of the divots, they'll never find him. Wolford! He's been good. It's okay, probably won't be him, it'll probably be McClendon anyway. <laughs> it'll probably be McClendon, you're quite right. Torrens. I think, I think Manly need a little injection here. I think I'll be getting Craig Field out there to keep them positive with the ball. They've led 20 to 2, now 20 to 16. I think they're looking over their shoulder and wondering if they can hang on rather than wanting to be positive with the football. And maybe Craig Field can inject a little bit more back into them. Plus a better kicking game other than the first try, which was off a, a poor kick, really. There's been no kicking game for Manly. A piece of refereeing, I think, from McGlain. This is... This has been lost by Peters. Now, McFadden's gone to hooker. McClendon's gone to half. Croak has gone into the centres. And Wolford has come off. And this Manly player coming off is Peters. A Canberra with a team that looks nothing like the one they chose on Tuesday night. McNamara. Vanacola. Centering play. Opposition 20 metre line. Oh, Crocus. Crocus uh, propelled the ball forward. And McBlain will put a scrum down. Yeah, it certainly went forward, but I'll tell you what's happened with this Canberra side. Some young players in this side, like your McFadden's and your McClendon's, have been sitting back and playing with the likes of Clyde, Daly and Stewart. And a little tentative about getting themselves involved and waiting for these big-name players. All of a sudden, Clyde, uh, it's all of a sudden Stewart and Daly aren't there, and they feel a little more comfortable in coming in and demanding the ball. And as a result, they've opened up their play enormously. They're really troubling this manly defence. Tuvi. So the introverts have become extroverts, Phil. Well, it's got to happen one day, doesn't it? I mean, there's got to be a change in the guard at some time. Not for one moment am I suggesting Stuart and Daly are on the way out, but it's a, it's a good chance for these young fellas, you know, just to get out and play some football and not be worried about what these senior players are doing. Taylor. Jimmy Sedaris. Cliffy Lyons. Phillips pushing away from McClendon. McClendon eventually winning the battle with a bit of help from Brad Clyde. Tuvi. I think Bob Fulton's got to get Craig Field on the, uh, out there on the field because the kicking game is poor and Canberra getting the ball in relatively good position every time Manly give it up. And that weight of possession is just going to tell on them. They're going to score points on this Manly side. Full of eight. Davico. Right on the halfway line. Ricky. This will be play on, advantage Manly, zero tackle. Hopawadi got the first try. That started Manly on a wave that carried them to an eight point lead at half time. And at one stage, an 18-point lead. Taylor feeling the 
total wrath of the Canberra defence of DeVico and Hetherington. Tuvi running from dummy half, trying to get something going for Manley. Sadaris at receiver, Lyons at second, Menzies out in the centre. Bootlace tackle from Brandon Pearson. Hill for Lyons, Lyons punching it down into that corner. With great precision, he finds the line. And if you want a raffle ticket for the Valley Dragon Footy Club, get your numbers out. It's one. Don't forget tomorrow morning three, again, six o'clock, the final three, round of the 1998 US Masters. Three, the green jacket at the end of the day. Will it be Fred Couples? Leads by a couple. A trio of right next to the great players chasing. Store. Tigers not far away. Jumpers. The Tigers close enough. Yes. Steve Roach. Gee, I'll tell you what, this Canberra defence has, has lifted when Manly have got the football coming out of their own end. They would have been lucky to make 20 yards in their last two sets of six tackles if it wasn't for the kick. Brad Clyde. Like a big steamroller. DeVico. Penalty. Canberra. Penalise this man, Damian Brown, for an incident when he was at marker. Yeah, that's what he's got him for, not allowing him up to play the ball. Continued to pull him down. So, we have got a very interesting contest unfolding here. Both with one win in the National Rugby League out of four weekends of football. Two of the top dogs. Good work, McClendon. Away from Boyle to Croker. Croker tries to fend away. He's on the 40-metre line. Wolford is back on. Now for Boyle. He's inside the 30-metre line. They've occupied this territory largely in the second half. Vanacolo did well. Boyle supported. Kossev hanging on. Some of these Manly players struggling to get back. Now DeVico out wide. Big DeVico throws the pass. Red Clyde's there. The ball is with Manly's Phillips. Phillips has pulled down. Manly a penalty. Yeah, great hustle there by Luke Phillips. He got up off his line and when the flick pass came back in field, it was a dangerous situation for Manly. But he never gave up on it. He just kept wrestling, came up with the football, and now drawn the penalty, which will relieve a little bit of the pressure for Manly. They really have got to start to play more positively with the football. I don't think they're going to hang on to a four-point lead. I may be wrong, but I don't think four points is going to be enough. They're going to have to score again if they want to win this game. Brown. More vigour in the defence, Peter. Well, they have lifted, as Steve Rach has pointed out, but they needed to. And I do think that it coincides with going a little bit higher in the tackles. Tierney. Well, Phil has already told us that they were spoken to about their tackling style. It's had a detrimental effect in the first 40 minutes. To beat Manly, Ray, you've got to stop the football, and that's what they're starting to do. Juvi. Supported. Gartner. Gartner's got some space, but he gets it to the 10-metre line. From Tierney. Tuvi's there again. Lyons is with it. Ah, oh, Menzies had the... He had the defence in his eyes. Snatched at the ball. A chance goes for the Eagles. Yes, and what seemed so easy early in the first half becomes a little bit more difficult under the pressure of the closeness in the scores. And Menzies and Lyons, despite having a great combination there, coming up with the error, will lose the pressure for Canberra. Only four points of difference. They'd be feeling pretty good about this, Canberra. But I want a good ten minutes. Mate, I'm yelling out all day. I go home horse after this one. President's Cup today was won by Manly. 22 to 16 over the Raiders. It's likely we might have a repeat of that scoreline. 20 points to 16 currently. Manly. That is Seabold. He's recovered from that injury. Boyle, a veteran of Canberra, and their performances 
Over, it must be 10 years. McNamara. That's McClendon in 16. Now Vanacolo. Good contest over there with Torrens. Clyde. Ferner. The left. Right step from Ferner. Customary. Not working on Manly as they find the line now. Pretty good kick there from Simon Wolford. Picked up a good 40 metres. Of course, by kicking from dummy half, all the chasers on side, although they didn't come into the reckoning on that occasion because the ball did go into touch. But without Laurie Daly there, who does most of the kicking, there's going to be some extra responsibility yeah, around in that department. On that occasion, the youngster took it on his shoulders. The 18th of April, tickets available through Ticketek outlets. After six o'clock tonight, something different. Your chance to chat with former Australian cricket cha uh, captain Ian Chappell. Live on 9MSN. And the website address for that to talk to Ian. Sports.9msn.com.au. What are you laughing at? Do you mind? Oh, no, you handle it great. Why do you keep laughing? when I'm trying to do something brand new. So that's better defence there. Jim Sedaris turning and looking for support. Canberra player over the top. And that time, David Ferner forcing the mistake, going in strongly on Jeff Toovey, although he believes that there was no knock-on. I don't think there was either. By the way here, boys, I'd still be looking to the sideline for Craig Field. I think he can provide the enthusiasm here, or, or certainly the injection of spark that Manly are looking for. They're not playing very positively with the ball at all. Craig Field sitting out there waiting for his opportunity, and you know how much he loves his football. You can bet your life once he gets out there, he'll get amongst them. And Canberra with another great opportunity. 40 metres out, scrum in the middle of the field. Is full of eye down the left of the ground again where he scored Canberra's most recent try. Seabold, McFadden, Kennedy, Kennedy tried to hurdle the tackle. Wolford to the open. Seabold. Three metres inside the 20 line. Kennedy again. Puts a fend on Gartner. Five gone now for Canberra. Wolford to the blind. Little kick by McFadden and the fullback cleans it up again. This Manly defence is really sitting back and waiting on Canberra. And whether it comes out of the confidence of not having won games or Starting to get nervous about the scoreline, but there's, there's nothing positive about the Manly play at the moment. They're really sitting back. And this is the second time that Canberra in this second half have been able to force a repeat set of six. From the last one, they scored a try. And Manly really struggling behind their post now. It wasn't an easy kick either from McFadden there. There are a lot of Manly bodies, so to get it into the in-goal area, he had to be fairly precise. We've got another Manly play with an injury problem. You see him leaving there at the top of the screen over the dead ball line. Now a couple of more players coming into the action in Joe Taylor and Damien Brown. And the supporters really trying to lift their team. They're urging for the Raiders to come back. They've done a very big job to get this far. Lost daily 30 minutes into the game. Some of the lesser lights are rising to the occasion. Ferner, 20 metre line, line side McNamara. Now will they get back this time? Again with Luke Phillips. And again they will give the ball back to Canberra. Yeah, good football there. McNamara read that pretty well. He saw that Phillips was up in the line. He couldn't get through, but the kick was that well placed and the chase is that good. But they got the next best result. No manly player. Coming up with an infringement there. Phillips did well to get back. They're slowly building the pressure. It gets back to what I said, Peter. I mean, I'm sure if Ricky Stewart and Laurie Daly on their side, that young fellow wouldn't have even thought about chip and chase for himself. 
All of a sudden, those older heads aren't there, and these kids know it's up to themselves, and a little bit of a free reign. They're certainly playing some good football. Wiki. Smashed down. 38 metres from the line. Vanakolo. He's one of those straight up and down runners. Doesn't go round. McFadden. Oh, little dummy. Then he went under. He burrowed under the little fellow and got it to the 10 metre line. Now they come down the blind. Back of the open. Right down by Manley. It's play on. It's Wolford with the ball. Six more tackles. from the line Croker Jason Croker away to McFadden McFadden gets the pass down for Seabold eight metres out from the line McClendon down by Menzies. Firma comes back on the open side, goes for it. Two metres from the line. Five gone. Wolford with a kick. And Manley saving with scrambling defence. <laughs> They've pulled off about four tackles there with one arm grabs that have just stopped the Canberra side inches. And this time, Simon Wolford from Dummy Half hits the post and very intelligently there, David Ferner knew he was offside, didn't play at the football. Manly in sixes and sevens, you could throw a handkerchief over them at... Handkerchief. Throw a handkerchief over them at the, at the moment. Handkerchief. Oh, he's, that? he's fitting in good, isn't he, Russ? <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll get a permanent berth here for sure. Now, Sidaris sweeping it back. 2v. Angle for Hoppawati. Space down the left for Torrens, but put down. Lions. Gartner away, Menzies. He puts the kick on it. Yeah, very intelligent, Stephen Menzies. Very intelligent. Full of I. I thought he was going to try something a little extra there. Could only have led to disaster for Manley. And very intelligently, he put his foot to the ball down in the corner. Where's Craig Field? He's got to get on the field. Good thing from Steve Menzies there. He knew it was the last tackle. Now Canberra. Through Brent, Brandon Pearson take the ball. 28 out. They did well, Manly, there. They went the length of the field in six tackles. They need to do so, but aren't these youngsters lookalikes, really? McFadden and McClendon causing all sorts of problems for the Manly defence with their darting. Ray had wished they'd changed their name to Smith and Jones. <laughs> Really got us wrapped up today. McClendon, McFadden, McNamara, and this is Gartner. Jason Croker's playing a much more involved role now for Canberra. Hubbawadi, the inside ball, has seen the big fellow go 30 metres down to the 10. McNamara, great tackle. Knock on. We will break. Be back with you in just a moment. Four points the margin. 16 Canberra withholding a manly avalanche. Ruben Wiki. People in New Zealand well catered for today. Davico. This was John Hopawati in full flight a few minutes ago and knocking on. So Canberra working it back beyond their own 40 metre line with one of the superstars, Brad Clyde, McFadden, McClendon, Croker, Kennedy. They're just into Manley's area on tackle five and Hetherington's got the ball. Not a bad kick either from the front rower. Tyron's out of the corner. Smashed by Wiki and Vanacolo. Craig Fields coming on, Phil Gill. He's certainly coming to the sideline now, and on he goes as Cliff Lyons runs from the field. I don't think it'll take long for the little fellow 
to get his side moving forward and maybe his kicking game could be the difference in getting Manly home here. Peters. Field. From dummy half. They've had him corralled for 67 minutes, Craig Field. And that was tremendous defence from Canberra. Five tackles gone, Craig Field. Is this going to stay in the field of play? No, it's not. Well, they were really rewarded there, the Raiders, for coming up with five good defensive tackles. And now they'll have six of their own, only 30 out. McFadden's injured for Canberra. Just missing it. Little McFadden's coming off. Clyde. Grabbed and pulled down by Kossif. Davico. Four points the margin. Canberra being urged by the crowd. Boyle. Nine metres out. Desperate from Sedaris. Angle for Firma. Straight ahead for Kennedy. Boyle again. Davico. Davico. Got one try today. Fifth tackle. Through McNamara to McClendon. Flicked away for Verna. Now for McNamara. Back and down for McClendon. And that's the end of the tackle count for the turnover. They had to get a kick in there. They kept it alive well, especially David Verna getting a flick pass out the back. But McClendon at the death had to roll one into the in-goal area and maintain the pressure. Great defence from Manly, especially a tackle from Jim Sedaris on Ben Kennedy close to the posts. Steve Roach on the sidelines. I've got to say, it's a tough call on Craig Field. He's been sitting on the sideline freezing for the for the whole of the game. He gets sent, off, sent on with 12 minutes to go and expects to do the kicking. Menzies. This is Peters. Now, Kossif. Just outside the 40 metre line. Field. This kick. Very high, bouncing up for the fullback McNamara, who's had a fine game for Canberra. And the run carries him to the 20 metre line. This is the young man I'd be trying to get closer to the action. Nicola, he looks like a real talent. That's why he was such a, a hot property. A lot of the sides trying to get his services. Canberra came up trumps there, almost a swap with Quentin Pongier as David Ferner. Gets a great ball away. Brandon Pearson into some space. Boyle. McClendon. Then Croker. Clyde on the stampede. Backwards to Hopawadi. Hancock comes away for Manly. Hancock pulled down 15 out. Well, that's where Bradley Clyde's most dangerous. He keeps coming in and doing that bullocking work, helping his forwards out. But if he could just place himself out on the edges, he's the one that might break this game wide open for Canberra. They're running onto a short ball, and that's the Bradley Clyde we remember. Out amongst the centres, using his, his athleticism. With hindsight, he might have been just as well to try and stampede over the tackle of Phillips. He went looking for support, but nobody was with the big fellow. And as I say, looking back, he probably should have just gone straight into Phillips and bashed his way through. I'm pretty sure he would have done it. Menzies. Phillips up in the back line. Field out of 5'8". Easily away from a defender. And then putting up another big kick, and it'll bounce favourably for him this time. His first kick might not have been a particularly good one, going to touch on the full, but his last couple have been beauties. And he's coming off. Well, I can only imagine he's injured, or he's carried an injury in today's game. Just clever work there to eat up a couple of extra metres when he was under pressure. And give his side a rest. Manly really haven't had a break in this second half. Man Canberra haven't dropped a ball. They've forced a few line dropouts. They're winning the penalties in the second half. Manly can't put any pressure on this Canberra side at all. 
And those sort of things where your kicker can pick up the line. I know he missed with the first one, but he's found touch there and he's just given them a breather before they have to start their defence again. Ruben Wicky. Well, if it is an injury with Craig Field, the doctor didn't seem all that concerned. Now Canberra. Pearson. Near the halfway line. Seabold. McClendon. Hetherington. Ferner. Tries to bust between Menzies and Lyons. Wicky. Blind side is stacked if they go back that way. 30 metre line. And the fifth tackle. Long ball. McClendon. Clyde out wide where Phil wants him. Then the kick ahead. And another one, and it's going to be picked up by Canberra. Six more tackles. Croker, 10 metres out from the line. Clyde. Now it's McFadden back on. Two metres from the line. For Firma. Clyde. Boyle. Looking for the inside pass to McClendon. He's a dummy half now. Clyde. Involved in everything late in the game. Three metres from the line. McFadden. McClendon. And able to get it away for Ferner. He bumps off Toby. Ferner can't get rid of the ball. The line a metre away. Kennedy. McClendon. And then he's over the line. Croker. Croker's got the ball over the line. and have an opportunity to go to the lead if David Ferner, who hasn't kicked well today, can steer the conversion over. It had to come. They really look like going through this manly defence so often there. No problems with going behind Brandon Pearson to try score because there was no manly defender being impeded. Luke Phillips came up with two or three try-saving tackles in the lead-up. He's had a, a, a great game this afternoon, the manly fullback. But Jason Croker, weight of numbers, weight of possession, Finally gets across. And really, the McFadden and, and McClendon, they've been marvellous in this second half. Oh, McFadden, McClendon, McClendon, McFadden. You can see here where Hancock races up and gets himself in no man's land on the short side. He's really not defending to anyone. He's put, run up and put himself in a hole rather than on a defender. And a simple little play down the short side there has resulted in a try to Croker and a levelling of the scores and David Ferner with the opportunity to put them in front at McClendon, McFadden, McFadden, McClendon. Ray, I don't know how you do it. Oh, he does it. He does it better than anyone. He's pushed the ball, hasn't he, David Fern, when he's when he's kicked? Even the one that hit the post, he, he, he pushed it. I wonder whether he'll make the, the necessary adjustment here. What, and... what about uh, what about Brad Clyde in this second half? In, in the last ten minutes? Tremendous. It's getting back to the type of football he's played. And it's coincided... With, 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 his forwards, with his forwards starting to roll their sleeves up so he can move himself back out into the back line and play a little wider. Here's Ferner then, Phil. Five in, 20 out. To lead in the game, and he's pushed it out to the right again. Oh, he's had an unhappy day. 20, 20, 75 minutes gone. Mal Meninga. He'd have to be... Very, very warm on the inside at the thought of what his side has done. Trailing by 18 and without Daly for the last um, 50 minutes. Now for Canberra, other than David Fern, who I don't know if these young fellas, I suppose they've done everything else, they can kick field goals. But Craig Field is usually the field goal kicker for Manly. And of course he's still on the sideline, so if this does come down to a point with five minutes to go, you think that's what both sides would be working for. You'd have to get Craig Field back out there. Hetherington tries to bust them down the centre. Steve Roach. Gee, they've had some football, haven't they, this Canberra side? They've done it well, persistent. It'll pay off at the end of the day if they do uh, end up getting this win against Manly. Five gone. They're on the halfway line. Croker's after this ball from an onside position. Ooh. Phillips. Referee Will, that was a knockback. It was a near thing for Luke Phillips. 
Like Hancock out of dummy half. Does well to pick up 10 and gets a penalty. Just have a look, it gets a touch here, Luke Phillips. Fortunately, it went back. In the interim, he's caught Canberra offside. Yeah, the players on the blind side didn't retire the team. So, will either of them get a chance to snatch victory with the field goal? There hasn't been a drawn result this year in the inaugural NRL competition. At the moment, it's seesawing around the halfway mark. Kosef. I do think, Ray, with the field goal exponents out there at the moment, they've got to be in a pretty close condition, position. I don't think that there's any long-range shooters out there, really. They've got to be you know, within the 20. Terry Hill. Lions sweeping it. Picked up by Taylor. Well oh. done by the big man, Gardner. Smashed down by Wiki. He was unguarded, Daniel. Kossett's kick, rebound. Boyle's offside, McClendon's away with the ball, McClendon's going to go all the way, clear the tarmac, here he comes, McClendon, one of these little leprechauns, has a finally put the nail in the coffin, look at Daly on the sidelines, the crowd goes mad, Canberra 24, Manly 20, look at Laurie Daly. Yeah, no trouble with the hamstring there, it's forgotten for the moment. Nick Kossaf here tried to kick the, the football through. It bounces off the knee. Fortunately for Canberra, McClendon was in an onside position. And this is just reward. He has been the best player on the field in the last 50 minutes of this game. And he's involved himself in everything. And when you do that, it's amazing how often you just happen to be in the right place at the right time. <laughs> you guess, guess who it came off? Brad Clyde. Yeah, well, I mean... It comes back to the kicking as well. Manly just haven't taken up any field position in this second half and sheer weight of possession has, has got their tackle counts up. They tie. They look as though they've been waiting, trying to protect the lead. They led 20 points to two halfway through the first half. We said the game wasn't over. I don't know if we really believed it at the time. Once Laurie Daly left the field, you would have to think that Manly were home. But golly, say it again. McFadden Talk about it. Talk about Laurie Daly leaving the field. His feet have been off the ground for the last three minutes. David Thurner finally gets it over. 26 to 20. Daly shouting instructions from the sideline. So am I right in saying that Canberra have now scored 24 points in a row to nil? Now 20 points to two. And there's the siren. There is the siren, Peter. You're quite right. They came here with one win each. One of them had to lose, and it seemed absolutely certain it would be Canberra. But they've come from 20 to 2 down to win this game. 26 to 20. Daly was lost at the half hour. Stewart didn't play. And they have scored five tries to four and won the game. 26 to 20, magnificently exciting game. After the break, we'll be back at Bruce Stadium and Peter and Phil will wrap it. Blocker will have our $1,000 man of the match for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Here's a break. We're back. Canberra Raiders this afternoon at Bruce coming back from a seemingly impossible position to defeat Manly 26 points to 20 with DeVico. Croker got two tries. Phil Levi, McClendon, David Ferner kicked three from six. And for the Eagles, Hopawate, Phillips, Menzies and Gartner scored four pointers. Luke Phillips kicked two from four. The young players for Canberra stood up to be counted this afternoon and none more so than our man of the match who is with Steve Roach. Well, $1,000 man of the match goes to Mark McClendon, the 5'8 for the Canberra Raiders. Magnificent performance down 20 to 2 in the first half. What a great, what a great effort from the Raiders. Yeah, it was a good, it was a good effort for the team. Uh, we were a bit slow in the first half, as usual. Mel gave us a bit of a talk to at half time and told us to have a dig, and that's what we did. But you went about it the hard way. You went around Australia to get that win, finally. Had plenty of opportunities here in the second half. Yeah, we bombed a few uh, opportunities, but I'm sure they'll come during the year. The way to possession, too, uh, really took its toll on Manly. They probably thought they had the game won. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, 
with, with both our halves gone, Ricky Stewart was out and Laurie Daly went off, I'm sure they were pretty confident winning. And how did it feel to burn such a young boy filling in for Laurie Daly? Oh, it's great, especially in front of the home crowd, our first home game, and it's just good for the, the fans to turn up today. Well, Martin, congratulations, $1,000 richer. Good on you, mate. We'll Thank see you. a lot more of you. Thanks, mate. We will indeed. This 18-year-old, very, very talented, got three points in our Daly M Awards. Luke Phillips was marvellous for Manly at fullback. He took two, and Andrew McFadden got the one point in our Daily M's. And don't forget to check the Daily Telegraph and the Courier Mail tomorrow for all the points in our awards. 20 to 2 down, the game should have been over. Have we seen the resurgence that the Cairns were looking for this afternoon? Well, I said before the game, the team that won today would see that as a kickstart to their season. Uh, normally, when you're out of form, you look to your senior players. Today, it was the kids that gave them the great shot of enthusiasm and great football. The injection of Mark McClendon and Andrew McFadden, a masterstroke from coach Mal Meninga. Down by 18 points, after perhaps their worst ever start to a match, the Raiders lost captain Laurie Daly and all appeared hopeless. But with their backs to the wall, a side which in recent weeks has lacked character, lifted right across the park. A try before half-time was the start of the big revival. With halves Andrew McFadden and Mark McClendon given full reign, the Raiders produced the Burnborough-type finish to take the lead with seconds remaining. I was and I was just hoping for the bounce and it came up for me. Uh, I was just, there was no one near me, I was concentrating just putting, all the, putting the ball on the ground. An excited captain looked on from the sideline as the rookie Raiders took the day. For the guys to come back in the second half like that and the young blokes to play as well as they did, it was just you know, probably the best effort I've ever been involved with in my 12 years at the club. Both Daly and Ricky Stewart are expected back this week. But coach Mal Meninga won't hesitate to use the little backs in the future. They keep on going like that, Robbie. It's going to be hard to put Laurie back in the side. <laughs> in front of the biggest Bruce crowd this year, it was the perfect outcome for the Green Machine. It was a fair tale for us today. With preparations now underway for Saturday's home fixture against the Steelers, the warning is out. The Raiders are back and a finals campaign is again in their sights. Champion Raiders half Ricky Stewart was again rushed to hospital after further problems with severe headaches last night. Stewart met with a specialist this morning and will have a series of neck x-rays on Wednesday, still hopeful of tackling the Steelers. They're probably the best effort I've ever been involved with in my 12 years at the club. Me and Andrew McFadden, um, we've always wanted to play together in first grade, it's sort of been our ambition and um, today was the day. When Laurie went off the field at half time, it, it was, you know, be on, their, or on them, on their shoulders to, to do that. And and celebrations in the Raiders camp have unfortunately been cut short by news of another bout of illness.